Okay, last round. Snap it off. Have a turn to Alchemist on the play. Maybe we can just destroy him if he doesn't have removal. I wonder if cycling the Rift Bolt is better. I'm gonna not, because it could potentially deal damage, more damage with the Thermo or kill something. Another affinity matchup? Okay, I don't hate this because I'm on the play with a Thermo. Which can block a lot of his random dudes. Hmm. So this basically has haste. But it could maybe get in for damage even. If he doesn't play something next turn. Which isn't that unlikely. That's weird because like that I'm losing one damage if I play the archer than just the alchemist next turn. So I think I'm actually gonna not get greedy and play the alchemist. Could be wrong, but If he has another development turn, the problem is there's so many things he can play. Now that he has the drum, like a flare husk or a frogmite that just bricks the bricks the archer. Atog. Yeah, there's the flare husk, so I'm glad that I played it the way I did. There's the Atog. Yeah. Atog is pretty tough. Dog is pretty tough. I kind of just have to hope he doesn't have fling. And I can actually take one hit from the Atog and then start blocking it. Which is kind of nice. Opponents just add so much life, though. It's problematic. Last opponent just never played an Atog. It's like my worst nightmare as a red deck. I can ne never kill it. And it can ki if I don't block it, it can just kill me. With a fling, but nothing I can do at this point. Somber hover guard. Okay, you can kind of see that the the lists are different. Somber hover guard is not a card I'm that afraid of, though. Generally, it's just one less card that's not not a thought, not a thought cast, not a fling, not a blast. Just another colored spell that doesn't really do anything because he's either going to combo me out or I'm going to. Kill him in time. I guess if I never draw land, he might just be able to kill me, like, quote-unquote, fairly. Before anything happens. I'm just going to take the Atog and scoop the fling, though, if he has it. I need both of my creatures in play. Well, we'll block that, and maybe this, this attack means that he has the fling, but... Okay, we've survived. The fact that he doesn't have the fling means I feel pretty good about my chances this game. He doesn't have a blast either. I kind of need to draw land this turn, though. I've got two shots at it because of the needle drop. Okay. I suppose we'll start with the Needle Drop. I think I probably am going to win. Assuming I have Burn. Fire Blast is 6. Lava Spike is 4. It's 10 damage. Plus the three he's about to take. Fifteen. Or thirteen. So if I draw... I'm sorry, so he's at sixteen. Let's see what I draw. I think if I draw three damage burn spell, I might just win. 
positive though. There's that silly stagger shot, but it's it's in this flex slot anyway. Is there any reason to play this curse to like guarantee an extra damage next turn? I don't think so, because I have the stagger shock, so. I think I just suspend. Put all my cards on the table and say, hey, I'm killing you next turn. What are you gonna do about it? It's a ten and the rift bull. Yeah, I mean. I don't even have to block anything that's not the ATOG. I might still die if he draws fling though. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It's possible I actually wasn't dead last turn to fling. Oh no, but what he could do, he could have sacked everything except for the drum. But he can't float mana through declare blockers. So actually, now that I'm doing the math in my head, I don't think he had enough artifacts to kill me. If he had it, so he might still have it, but. I don't, I think I can block enough stuff for it not to matter. Like what I'll do is I'll block the archer on the 4-4 and then, th well. Do I need one of these things to live? Since I have the stagger shock, he's at virtual 10 plus 3 is 7 plus 4 from fire blast. So I actually need one of these things to live. I shouldn't shuffle this pen. You're probably probably annoying the crap out of you guys. So can I, uh, fling does, assume he's got a red land, 5, 10, 12, or 11, plus 7, yeah, assume he's got like a red land or a prism or something, I'm dead. If I chump the carapace forger though, I don't, if I draw a land, I just don't have lethal, that's the problem. I can only put him, so I, I think I have to block this way. Problem is if he's got a Galvanic Blast though. I mean I have to block the Atog, obviously. I could just be ballsy and not block it, but then I died a Galvanic Blast, I think. But he's kind of weird because he didn't leave the germ back. Which meant I don't know if he had the Galvanic Blast. So I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a blast. Oh, what is this? What is red? Maybe it is a blast? I have to draw. No, it's another ATOG. Okay. We win. I was going to say, if he had a blast, I feel like the sequencing there might have been different. He might have killed something pre-blocks or something. Forced me to lose my one of my guys. And while dealing the extra damage. Okay, ping. And opponent's super dead. Okay, so we're going to have to beat him on the draw, which is interesting that he's got Somber Hover Guard, which, and Atog, which is going to make my Martyr a little bit worse. I don't know if Feed the Clan is the normal card. I've seen, like, COP White. Like, I beat Feed the Clan, and I would have lost the COP, I think. Even though COP is actually weirdly beatable when you, what you do is you draw a lot of your pingers. And they just can't, they just don't have enough mana to save everything. And then you just wait and do everything in one turn. I beat it a few times, which is kind of nice. Guess I won't show him the fire blast. I'll kill him with the with the curse of the pierced heart. For sick Val. 
Even if he does anything, I have Fire Blast, so... Oh, actually, he could fling me. So let's just kill him. I mean, not... whatever. <laughs> Gratuitous, sure. Okay, so four Martyrs, three Smash to Smithereens... What, do I have four Smashes? No. What did I cut? We cut the curses. Because they just, they're, his creatures just hit too hard. We cut Lava Spike, Burst Lightning, one Searing Blaze, which actually, he showed me Sombra Hover Guard. I think on the draw, I'll keep the Searing Blazes in. And they're not terrible against Atog. They're actually pretty good against Atog because it just forces him to sack two things when he doesn't want to. A Lava Spike's just bad, I think. Stagger Shark doesn't kill enough, but I'm going kind of control with the Martyrs. So let's cut another Lava Spike. It's fine. Stagger Shark can also help you, like, use Searing Blazes or Lightning Bolts to kill X4s. That's just re the real problem is when they get those X4s into play. It's possible Needle Drop's bad on the draw. But it's pretty much impossible, unless they're really fast. I don't think it's often right to cut the Needle Drop. Weird hand, but like, this is a pretty good 5, 6, or 5 or 6 card hand, assuming these are random cards basically, which is what we're going to get with a mulligan. So we just keep. No Smash, no Martyr. But like, we have a Searing Blaze, which is very similar to a Smash. Maybe I can get a Flare Husk, maybe I can get a Frog Mite. Maybe if I'm really lucky, I can get a Carapace Forger. Like, this is a matchup that you would assume would be bad, especially because in Modern, like, Affinity is good against Burn, but... The Affinity deck takes some setup, and just... The only unfair thing they do is Atog, and, like, you're just going to kill them on turn 4 almost every time, so... That's why you see cyborg cards like Feed the Clan and Circle Protection red, because otherwise they're just going to fold to burn. Okay, there's a drum, so that's actually nice because now Searing Blaze drew three Forgotten Caves two games in a row. Don't know how I feel about the Moto Shuffler right now. It's kind of bizarre, but... If I can get a Frogmite or something with the Searing Blaze, I'll be pretty happy. If he's got a Carapace Forger, though, that could be a problem. Or even an Atog. Thoughtcast. Yeah, sure. Thoughtcast is so good. But Springleaf Drums. I actually, you know what? I'm not sure. Does this deck always play Springleaf Drum? I almost feel as if that's like a... A card that is not always in this deck. I could go after Great Furnace, but... I would rather save a smash for just a creature because he's got the Springleaf Drums. Like a Mirror Enforcer would be great. Another Frog might. Even a Flare Husk or something would be nice. Every time that I force him to like use stars and stuff instead of doing anything, weird that he wouldn't just randomly crack that star. Makes me think that he's got a Carapace Forger in hand. Um, interesting. Because otherwise he'd just crack it, right? Now he's going to try to get green off of that. So I think what we're supposed to do is just kill the Great Furnace on his upkeep. Even though I do want to get the Alchemist out there, he also could just have a Galvanic Blast. So playing it out is kind of silly, I think. If he's got a Hydro Blast or a Dispel, he's definitely going to use it, but at least it takes takes a mana off of him here. Okay, looks like he's got a Dispel. Or he's, like, just desperately cracking for one. I suppose he also might have an Atog, and he's saving the Chromatic Star for that. Talc Rebuke. I love seeing the new cards in Popper. It's pretty cool. Hmm. It's 
pretty close whether I should play this Forgotten Cave or not. I'm going to play it, I think. Because I'm in a spot where... Well, actually... Alchemist isn't that great, basically. If I can't cast enough spells every turn. Carapace Forger. Okay, hopefully I draw Martyr of Sands is probably what I want. Smash is great, though. Holy cow. Oh, is Upkeep better time to do it? Yeah, Upkeep's a much better time to do it. Hmm... So I can suspend the Rift Bolt, or I can cash in the extra damage off the Thermo now. I think suspending the Rift Bolt's a little bit better. Pretty glad I played the Forgotten Cave. But yeah, definitely upkeep. Because if he does have a Hydro Blast, then I gain 4 life, basically. I could also wait to see what he does. But he could draw into a Metallic Rebuke. Oh god. Can I ping, please? Oh gosh, gosh, gosh. Okay, he's doing something, so I can... Please, 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 please. Oh, he's got Feed the Clan? So I got Feed the Clan. So I guess that's a pretty common card for people to play. If I knew that he had Feed the Clan, I'd probably... He's got a Fling, too? If I knew that he had Feed the Clan, I probably would not have played the Cave. But, you know, it is what it is. Yep. So this is, now I'm in a really weird spot. Because he's going to be at 26. So upkeep was actually a bad time. And I really learned my lesson there. Because now I think I just can't win, really. Because he can fling. I didn't, and that, I, I didn't deal him the damage. Now it's like going to be really impossible to win, I think. But I, what I can do is... Oh, maybe I should have killed, hit that. I think I have to kill this. Wow, this is, this is ugly. Oh, I should... I guess I should cycle this. Not that Needle Drop goes to creatures, but... Yeah, I actually would be... Yeah, I guess he would have just flinged that, but what I did was very, very stupid. I could maybe win, but I have to draw, like, I have to have him draw really poorly. Which, a uh, good start, and draw a creature really quickly. But that's kind of how it goes in Popper. Like, when you're playing the Burn Egg and you have a pile of removal, and you just start killing their guys. Okay. As usual, we just cycle the Needle Drop because we just want to draw into a creature faster. I wonder what would have happened if I didn't screw this game up. He would have a Fling and I would still have a Thermo. Okay, well now we're probably just dead. He can be drawing Galvanic Blasts and Counter Spells and all sorts of stuff. I'm actually going to play this Martyr out. I don't have that many red spells in my hand. If he wants to blast it, it's fine with me, but I need the damage. Like, if he just has nothing but counter spells, um, I wouldn't mind hitting him a few times with this. Get some damage out of it, though. It is showing it to him, which is a little awkward, but... I think I'm at the point... I'm past the point of the game where... I think I can still win this game, basically, so... And I got a blast out of it, which is what I kind of wanted to happen. Oh, he drew an Atog, so I'm dead. Okay, that's game. Alright, so the Feed the Clan was a bit problematic. I wonder if Curse is actually good. I think I'm going to put in a Curse instead of the Lava Spike. Kind of crazy to cut all the lava spikes because if, like, I have a quick quick kills kind of taken off the table. But 
it can still all come together potentially. Okay. So I just play this. I could play turn one martyr to try to get the damage in, but I think my plan is to play the archer, force him to use removal on it, if possible, and then like sweep the board. Also, if he doesn't kill the archer, I can just start uh, dealing some good damage with it. Could actually maybe go 1-1 one, one beat down on him if he's got a slow draw. Uh, land isn't even bad here because I can Searing Blaze, of course. Hoping he doesn't have a Gal Blast. Oh, it's a Flare Husk. Okay. Frogmite? Atog? Atog would be bad. Carapace Forger is, is, Carapace Forger is really bad. Gross. Hmm. I could Searing Blaze. It's kind of weird because I don't want to. I want to keep a lot of red spells in hand if possible. So I think maybe I should Searing Blaze, but that that makes him play creatures out less quickly. But I think his mana is kind of bad, so I actually think Searing Blaze is probably right. Kind of awkward though, because I'm pretty much sacrificing two damage. Assuming he eventually... Why does my F key keep stop working? I think that the damage... 2 damage might be irrelevant. I think if he had a blast, he probably would use it. So if I can survive, that can be pretty nice. He might just... He literally can just kill me maybe by equipping the Flare Husk and attacking. He also has two Great Foundries, so I kind of want to chain, start chaining him. This is the weird. This is the weird part about boarding in the Martyrs, is like if these were just Lava Spikes, I'd be in such better shape. So it's possible on the play against Affinity, I don't want Martyr because, you know, they have such big creatures and they're pretty slow and they can play around it. Because they have so many different big creatures. And it doesn't actually necessarily line up well against their draw. And it's a bad top deck. Like, even if he had to feed the clan, I think I could beat him. If these were lava spikes. Anyway, whatever. I mean, they're not lava spikes, so we need to play it as it lies. But now, if he wants the... If he wants mana, then he has to use the Carapace Forger, which every time he uses that, I'm essentially gaining four life. It's a pretty big game. Thoughtcast? Okay. Don't hate that start to his turn. Slams a land. That's not good. Another Carapace Forger actually isn't so bad. Ooh, okay. So now if I draw a land, I can martyr him. Do I want to suspend the Rift Bolt? I think I have to use my mana. The problem with suspending the Rift Bolt is if he equips the Flare Husk, then I can't actually kill the Carapace Forger. But if he does that, I can just Rift Bolt the Forger, maybe. That's still fine. He actually might do that, and then I can just YOLO try to draw a land. I'm just very mana pinched, so like. Even board wiping him doesn't necessarily do anything if he's at a high life total. I need him to be low enough that I can actually threaten threaten to kill him. If he just equips, I think I will Rift Bolt the Forger. It's kind of weird, though, because then it seems to me like if I were him, I'd always equip in this scenario. Because he's getting one more damage in, and then like saving himself three damage when his board's gonna get wiped anyway. Because if I draw a land, I just lose if I if I don't rift bolt the Carapace Forger. So maybe I'm supposed to not rift bolt at all. Like I do have the luxury of having a lot of one mana spells in my hand. I 
I think if he equips, I'm just going to try to draw a red spell. It's super greedy, but it only it backfires like a little more than a third of the time. And I know he's sitting on a bunch of spells because he's been missing lands. I guess he could also fling, which may be why he's tanking. And yeah, maybe I shouldn't play the Rift Bull, because if he kills the Martyr... Like, if he kills the Martyr and I draw a land, now I, I can't sweep the board. Okay, looks like he's not equipping the husk if he's just if he's just smooshing. Looks like he might have a fling though. If I were him, I think is a pretty smart play to fling. Weird sequencing. I think it makes no sense to not prison before you attack. Maybe he just has a blast and he's planning on blasting no matter what. That went really well for me. I'm also gonna be able to hit him for a damage with the Martyr, which I always I always say like I want to try to get that damage in. And obviously it's only relevant sometimes, but the game is the game that's relevant is just so absurd. So I guess I just sack it and show him Show him the non Martyr cards. Kind of in a weird spot because he's got these two great furnaces. And I'm not in love with the idea of him just copying these chains. But I can still sweep the board if I draw land. So hopefully he just deploys like some non ATOG creatures, doesn't equip, and I can kind of go from there. There's the ATOG, that's scary. Oh, okay, so I need a land. I need a land really bad. Yeah. This is not good. So I'm just dead, right? Like, the ATOG is going to get in no matter what, and he's got a million artifacts. Man, if I would have drawn a land, it would have been pretty interesting, actually. Because I don't think he can sack... He can sack two artifacts to save one Atog, and then I probably still die. Because he gets to sack the Frogmite and just like this. So yeah, it doesn't really matter that much, I suppose. But yeah, I'm just dead. It was a good run.